It's time for another episode of The Sean Tabbitt Show, a podcast where I connect you with thought leaders from across the globe, digging into some of my favorite topics like personal development, marketing, spirituality, and pretty much any other shiny object that happens to catch my attention. Today, my special guest is Noah St. John, and we're going to be discussing his new book, Power Habits, The New Science for Making Success Automatic. Noah, it is a great honor. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Sean. Great to be here today. Well, let me take a moment to introduce all of you to Noah. Noah St. John is known as the Power Habits Mentor and is famous for helping people get rid of their head trash and make more money. He is the only author in history to have works published by Hay House, HarperCollins, Simon & Schuster, Mind Valley, Nightingale Conant, and The Chicken Soup for the Soul Publisher. Noah also appears frequently in the news worldwide, including ABC, NBC, CBS, Fox, Parade Magazine, Entrepreneur.com, and The Huffington Post. I'm sure we'll mention this at the end of the interview, but I wanted to let you know right up front that you can get up to $299 worth of free gifts when you order Noah's new book, Power Habits, and you can do that at powerhabitsbook.com. Now, Noah, it's your turn. Are there any gaps that you'd like to fill in that I didn't cover in your bio? <laughs> I think you got it, Sean. I think, I think we're good. <laughs> All right. As you can tell, I've had a lot of caffeine this morning, so I'm very excited and energized. Uh, awesome. Uh, well, Noah, let's start with what we might call the story behind the book. We've heard a little bit about who you are, uh, but in terms of your journey with this book, I'm always curious to find out, was there a catalyst or something that got you moving in the direction of crafting this message? Yeah, absolutely, Sean. You know, it's funny because I grew up poor in a rich neighborhood, and, and I know that's a total cliche, but I grew up in this little town called Kennebunkport, Maine, which just happens to be one of the wealthiest communities in New England, but my family was dirt poor, and I mean that literally because we lived at the bottom of a dirt road in a drafty, unfinished house that my parents ended up losing to foreclosure. So from a very young age, I was painfully exposed to the gap, the chasm between the haves and the have-nots. The haves was everyone else in the community. The have-nots was my family. Now, you hear these speakers get on stage all the time, and they say, well, we were poor, but we were happy. We didn't know we were poor. Well, in my house, we freaking knew we were poor because my mother reminded us every day that we were poor and miserable. So it wasn't happy. It sucked. So, you know, I hated that life of poverty and fear and lack and not enoughness. That's what I grew up with in my family. But right down the street, I saw that there was great wealth and abundance. So, you know, I'm basically the nerdiest nerd in this industry, the personal and business growth industry. That means, you know, when I find a problem, when there's something that's wrong, when there's an issue, I just have to solve it. I have to get in there, get in the molecular level and then just solve it no matter what it is. I just I've always been that way. So even when I was a kid, when I, I just had to get out of that life of poverty I didn't know what else to do, but as a nerd, I did the only thing I knew to do, which was I went to the library and I started reading a lot of books on self-help, personal growth, Dale Carnegie, uh, Napoleon Hill, all the classics, right? You know, and I really, really tried to get them to work, but you know, I, I worked really hard. I could just never seem to get ahead, never seem to put it together. And so, you know, I did a bunch of survival jobs after my first time in college. And then I, you know, at the age of 25, I was so frustrated because I'd been working so hard with nothing to show for it. And I, at the age of 25, I decided to commit suicide. I decided, decided to take my own life because I didn't see any way out. Now, at the very last moment, and I, and I do share that story in the book, but basically at the very last moment, my life was spared. I didn't know why, but I decided to devote the rest of my life to serving God and serving humanity as best I could while I was still here on the earth. The only problem was I still didn't know I was here on the earth. And so I went on another journey. This is more of a spiritual journey. I started reading books, went back to the library, started reading books on Sell so, on uh, deep like by Deepak Chopra, Marianne Williamson, Ernest Holmes, Neil Donald Walsh, all the spiritual thinkers of our time. So, long story short, um, in 1997, I had two epiphanies that really changed my life, and that actually led me to start my own company, uh, launch my online business called SuccessClinic.com. And unbeknownst to me, I actually launched one of the very first personal and business growth websites on the internet back in 1997. And, you know, that's when I first uh, published my first book, which is called Permission to Succeed, where I really talked about these, uh, you know, these discoveries that I had. And so now, all these years later, now we have this new book, Power Habits. And that is really, and the subtitle is The New Science for Making Success Automatic. So what we do in this book is I show you what highly successful people do unconsciously that they can't teach you. So this was really what many people say about my work is this work starts, my work starts where Napoleon Hills left off. And so a lot of people are calling it the new science for making your success automatic, meaning that you don't have to do all the things that they're telling us. In fact, a lot of what I do is about doing less and having a lot more. 
Noah, for this next question, I want to connect back to something you shared a little bit about your backstory. I think for a lot of us who grew up in humble beginnings, and I can relate to a lot of what you had to say a moment ago about growing up like really dirt poor, I was there too. And when that is where we started out, we can have a lot of tra- a lot of head trash. You know, I'm not good enough. I'll never succeed. I was never given the tools or the options to be able to thrive. And uh, that's one of the things, whether it's in your books or in your live events, you talk to people a lot about dealing with their head trash. And, and you say that that's the number one reason people feel stuck. They just can't get ahead. So uh, give us your working definition from the book. Like what is head trash and why, why does that keep so many people from moving forward? Well, you're absolutely right, Sean. And yes, in my books and my online programs and my coaching and in my live events and in my keynote speeches, you know, whether I'm speaking for entrepreneurs or real estate or network marketing, colleges, universities, you know, um, athletes, uh, CEOs, you know, whether whatever I'm speaking at, I talk about this subject of head trash. So really, what is head trash? Well, the way that I teach it in my books and programs and coaching is that head trash is the voice in your head that says, I can't do it because dot, 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 right? And then you just fill in the blank, right? So we all want to have more in our lives, right? So what I teach is one of the things that we teach, one of the principles is about living what I call a freedom lifestyle, where you have more time, more energy, better relationships, and more money, right? Those elements of a freedom lifestyle. And so the point is we all want those things, right? And so people come up to me at my live events or my keynote speeches, and they say, hey, Noah, you know, I want to write a book like you've done, or I want to start my online business. I want to grow my business. I want to scale. I want to lose weight, whatever it might be, right? That's, that's your goal. But then the next sentence is, but I can't do it because, <laughs> right? And whatever happens after the word because is what you will fight to the death, right? And so that's so ironic about us humans is that we will fight to protect our excuses, our reasons. And what the reason for that is because we have an almost infinite capacity to make ourselves right. So if you don't believe me, put a Democrat and a Republican in the same room and have them watch a political speech and see what happens. Put a New York Yankees and a Boston Red Sox fan, have them watch a Yankees Red Sox game. Are they watching the same game? Well, yes and no. They're watching the same set of circumstances that happens on the field. But when one team does something great, one person will be happy, one will be miserable and vice versa. So you can see that we humans have an infinite capacity to make ourselves right. But I always teach my clients and my you know, people at my live events, I will say, this is one instance you don't want to be right, right? So for example, if you're saying, well, no, I really want to grow my business. I want to write a book. I want to have my goals, whatever it is, but I don't have the time, but I can't do it because, right? I don't have the time or I don't have the money. I can't afford it. I don't know the right people. I'm divorced. I have kids. I don't have kids. I live in the wrong city. I'm a Martian, you know, whatever the excuse is. And that's the thing. We always find those excuses. But the point is, you're going to make yourself right. So this is one instance where you definitely don't want to make yourself right. Well, and uh, I want to get to habits in a minute, but uh, your talk about head trash got me thinking, you know, I, I think a lot of us have read a range of self-help books and, you know, we might have positive quotes posted on our walls or we might wake up in the morning and speak our goals and positive things over ourselves. But there is that gap between reading something and speaking something and actually believing it. And it's where we actually start believing it where change starts to happen in our lives. So talk to us about that, that middle ground space that we need to somehow get past where we can actually believe this stuff and it starts making a difference every day. Yeah, absolutely. I talk about that very point in, the, in my book, Power Habits. And what I call that is your belief gap. Okay. So it's right here on page 113, okay, of the book Power Habits, okay, right there. And I call that your belief gap. And so what that means is that we all want to go to where we want to go, right? I call that your pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, whether it's to start your business, grow your business, write a book, lose weight, find love, whatever it might be, go on a fun vacation, whatever your pot of gold is. So, but right now you are where you are. Uh, obviously, right? But that's what I call your CPR. That's your current perceived reality. You are who you think you are and you have the limitations that you tell yourself you have. That's your CPR. But where you want to get to is your NDR. That's your new desired reality. That's your pot of gold. That's where you've made the money. You have the book. You have the relationship. You have the health, whatever it is that you want. But between your CPR and your NDR, there's a gap. And for millions and millions of people, Sean, it's about the belief gap. It's not that you can't do it. It's about that you think you can't do it. 
And as Henry Ford famously said, whether you believe you can or you can't, you're right. But what I say is, I actually updated Ford's quote a little bit. I say, whether you believe you can or you believe you can't, you make yourself right. And that's what I was just talking about a moment ago with your head trash. You're going to make yourself right. If you're going around saying, well, I'd love to X, but I can't do it because guess what? You're going to make yourself right. And of course, if you say, well, I want to do that, but I don't know how to do it. Now, that's a different point because you're like, well, I may not know how to do it right now, but I bet I can find someone. Maybe I can hire a coach. Maybe I can hire a mentor. Maybe I can hire somebody who's done it before, and then maybe they can help me get there. But that's not the same thing as saying, but I can't do it. Maybe you don't know how to do it, but you can still take the actions to reach your pot of gold. Noah, uh, another topic that you cover in the book is this hidden connection between habits and money. So what is that hidden connection and why is that so critical? Yeah, absolutely. This is something I love to talk about at my live events. We have a live event called Freedom Lifestyle Experience where I teach you how to do all this. And also at my keynote speeches, whether it's for entrepreneurs or network marketers or real estate or colleges, universities. But basically what I teach is that the hidden connection between habits and success, habits and money, is very simply this. When, whenever we have, when, and whenever we humans want to do something, right? Whenever we want to have a new skill or a new task, uh, just to accomplish something, there's always two components of that task, of that habit. And that is the inner component and the outer component. I just simply call it inner game and outer game. Now, your inner game is everything that happens between your ears that you can't see directly, but it affects everything that you do. So, for example, whether I'm speaking for entrepreneurs or real estate or network marketers or you know, CEOs, I always ask my audiences, what is one area of your life where your beliefs don't affect you? And, of course, people go, hmm, um, hmm, and I go, exactly, right? There's no place your beliefs don't affect you, right? Your beliefs affect your health, right, your peace of mind, your, your weight. Uh, certainly, your beliefs affect your finances, your money, your business, your career. Also affects your social life, your family life, your intimacy, and everything else, right? And so there's no area where your beliefs don't affect you. However, you can't see a belief. You can only see the effects of it, right? Now, also, you may be doing really well in one area of your life, but in another area, you're stuck or struggling. For example, maybe your business is going really well, but your health is suffering. Or maybe, you know, you're doing great with your relationships, but you don't have the money that you want, right? So it's not cookie cutter, one size fits all. It's very individualized for each person, right? So that's your inner game. But then we also have your outer game, right? Your outer game is everything you can see directly. It's right in front of your face, right? So in, in when we talk about entrepreneurship or business, you know, that's all the digital marketing that I teach, you know, all the sales funnels and lead magnets and marketing copy, all the customer facing market things. That's what all the gurus are teaching you. But the problem is it's only when you master your inner game and your outer game together that you have the phenomenon called success. Let me tell you a quick story to illustrate this. I was speaking at a conference uh, in Los Angeles for about a thousand entrepreneurs. I was you know, just speaking. I just walked off the stage, just finished speaking. And a man came up to me out of the audience, rushed up to me and he said, hey, Noah, I want to hire you as my coach. You are the coach I've been looking for. Now, I didn't know this man from Adam. Ironically, his name was Adam. <laughs> and so I said, okay, what's going on? He said, Noah, I'm totally stuck. I'm only making $4 million a year. Now, of course, I had to laugh, right? Because who wouldn't want to be stuck with quotes, right, at $4 million a year? And I said that to him. I said, well, that doesn't sound like much of a problem. He says, no, Noah, I'm the CEO of this company. I own this company. I'm a business owner. And we grew to $4 million in revenues really fast. But we have been stuck at $4 million for the past four years. Four years, we've been just plateaued, no growth at all. And he said, I have thrown all this money at this problem. I've hired all the gurus. He named all the gurus. And tens of thousands of dollars, and we have not had any growth. And he said, as soon as I heard you speak about inner game and outer game and head trash and foot on the brake, everything you just said, he said, I knew you're the coach I've been looking for. He hired me right on the spot. So I was able to work with him for about a year, 18 months. In that year, his company went from being stuck at $4 million for the previous four years to over $20 million in sales, a six times increase in less than 18 months. Now, how did I do that? Well, I have a magic wand and I'm able to do that. No, it's not a magic wand. <laughs> it's what it is. is it's, I showed him exactly what I'm sharing with all of you, which is how to master your inner game and your outer game. So he had thrown all this money at this problem for all the gurus, but he was only focused on one area. It wasn't until I showed him and gave him you know, the framework, the system, the strategies, the checklist to master his inner game and his outer game that he had that phenomenal growth. Well, Noah, you had mentioned the four elements of a freedom lifestyle. Would love to have you just, uh, I'm curious to know what those are for this conversation. So 
unpack those a little bit for us. Take us a little bit deeper into that part of your process. Yeah, absolutely. This is one of the things that, you know, I've been teaching for a long time now. We have a live event called Freedom Lifestyle Experience for this very reason. We want people to experience having that freedom lifestyle. So what is it? Well, when you look at this subject of, you know, why people uh, start their own business or, you know, why pe- people become entrepreneurs or even working from home, you know, one of the things that we want is to live what I call a freedom lifestyle. So it really comes down to these four elements. And that is more time, more energy, better relationships, and more money. Those four elements create or form what I call a freedom lifestyle. So think about the, uh, the area of time, right? How many times you say, well, gee, Noah, I'd like to go on a vacation or I'd like to publish my book, I'd like to grow my business, but I just don't have the time, right? That's one of the most common things that we hear all the time. And going back to what I said earlier, you're going to make yourself right. So, you know, one of the things you can do right now is catch yourself saying, oh man, I wish I could do this, but I don't have the time. Realize that time, it's not a, not a function of time at all. It's a function of focus and priorities. See, we live in a world of infinite distractions. So if you're working from home, let's say, and you know you don't have these systems in place, then you're going to be distracted and it's going to be really hard to get anything done. I mean, I've written 15 books working from home over the last two decades. I've been working from home for you know since the 90s. And how have I been able to publish 15 books? It's doing what I'm saying right now. So that's time. Then, of course, energy, right? That's how you go through the day. And then, you know, there's two types of energy. There's positive and negative. So are you doing more positive energy? happiness, gratitude, joy, you know, and enthusiasm, abundance? Or are you coming from the lower energy like jealousy, envy, fear, lack, and so forth, right? So it's really important to be able to gauge your energy and be able to shift your energy if you find yourself going into the negative. Relationships, very, very important, right? Because, you know, last time I checked, when you're selling your products or services, you want to be selling those to human beings. You know, last time I, I looked, you know, orangutans, dolphins, chimpanzees don't have credit cards. And with a name like Noah, I should know these things, right? So the point is, you know, relationships are, are everything, right? When it comes to personal and business, right? So also, and like I said earlier, maybe your personal life's doing great, but maybe your business is stuck. Or maybe your business is going great, maybe your personal life is suffering. So again, we got to look at all those elements. And of course, money. Money's very important. You know, people who say, well, money's not everything, they probably don't have any, right? I grew up poor. I know what it's like to not have money, and it sucks. There's nothing good about poverty. Believe me, I've been there, and it sucks. And, you know, there, 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 of course, people say, well, money can't buy happiness. Well, you know, as the great philosopher David Lee Roth once said, money may not be able to buy happiness, but it can buy a yacht to pull right up next to it. So I'm okay with that. Well, one of the things I think, Noah, that's going to happen as people get a hold of the ideas you're sharing in this book, some things are going to get set in motion. And not to say things are going to go on autopilot, but, you know, there's progress. There's momentum that's going to automatically be happening. Uh, and there's this phrase uh, I want you to comment ab- about this idea of being unconsciously competent at success. Unpack that for us. What in the world does that mean? Yeah, that is a mouthful. And, and that really goes back to, you know, really the title of the book, Power Habits, The New Science for Making Success Automatic, right? And people ask me that all the time. Well, how can success be automatic? Well, this is something that I've been writing about since, you know, the, 19, the 1990s, you know, over two decades now. And, you know, literally, by the way, I will just share that we've helped our coaching clients over these last two decades add over $2.7 billion in sales. That means we've helped people just like the people listening to this program add six figures, multiple six figures, seven, and yes, even eight figures to their business. Like Adam, that client that I shared with you earlier, you know, over eight figures, literally while working less. So this is one of the ways that we do it. So when we look at any human endeavor, any skill or habit, we go through four stages of competency. The first stage is unconscious incompetence. That means you don't know you don't know. The second stage is conscious incompetence. That means you know you don't know. The third stage is conscious competence, which is you know you know. And finally, the fourth stage is unconscious competence, which means you do without thinking. So the example I always give at my keynote speeches and you know my live events is driving a car, right? Probably everybody watching this program and listening knows how to drive a car, but at at one point in your life, you had to go through these four stages of competence. The first stage is unconscious incompetence. It means you didn't know, you didn't know how to drive a car. Nobody comes out of the womb and goes, hey, where's my car, right? I mean, (laughs) that's not possible, right? You don't even know you don't know. That's the first stage. Then you get to about the age eight, 10, 12 years old, and you're like, man, I want to get away from my parents, and all I got is this bicycle. I can't get far enough. How do you drive a car? I want to drive a car. How do you do that? Oh, shoot, I don't know how to drive a car, right? So now I know I don't know how to drive a car. Then the third stage is you go to driver's ed, you learn how to drive a car, you know, and everybody remember driving a car. I mean, when I was, when I took driver's ed, we had these, you know, huge behemoths, you know, about a block long, I got 12 miles to the gallon. 
you know, and it was just one of those things. And you're like, ah, I'm going to hit the, this cat. I'm going to run over a pedestrian, you know, freaking out because you don't know. Right. But then, of course, you learn and you like you get a license that says I'm consciously confident to drive a car. It doesn't say that, but that's what it means. And then, of course, now for most people listening to this program, you're unconsciously confident. That means you drive a car, you're doing it without thinking, right? You're doing 27 other things, but not consciously thinking because you're unconsciously confident. And think about all the things that we do every day that we're unconscious at, you know, getting up, tying our shoes, getting dressed, brushing our teeth, talking, reading, writing, and so forth. Right? There's literally dozens, maybe hundreds of things we do every day that we are unconscious of. Well, in my studies of success, what I have discovered is that there is a tiny minority of people that I call the naturals of success, the one percenters, and they are unconsciously competent at allowing themselves to succeed. What I mean by that is it's not about having more how-tos of success. It's about how to let yourself succeed. My very first book, in fact, was titled Permission to Succeed. I was the first person to actually understand this and talk about it and write about it in my books and in my programs, which is that we don't need more how-tos, right? All the gurus are teaching how to succeed, how to succeed. Not that it's wrong. It's just that most of us don't need any more of that. We're drowning in how to succeed information. Instead, what we actually need is a framework, a system to give yourself permission to succeed. That's why many people call my work or they say about my work that my work starts where Napoleon Hill's work left off. Napoleon Hill, of course, we all know wrote Think and Grow Rich, which was he interviewed all these people and said, well, how'd you become successful? Well, you do this, 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 and this. Okay, so do this, 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 and this. Well, how come millions of people have read that book and not everyone's successful? Because of what I'm saying right now. They left out all the good parts. It's like they gave you the pizza and they didn't give you the cheese and the toppings. Is it really a pizza? Well, sort of, but not really. So I give you the whole pizza. I give you all the cheese, the toppings, and everything else. And that's why my clients are having such amazing results. Noah, one of the things I've really appreciated uh, in this conversation today is that you've given us this kind of overview of kind of your whole career, the, some of the different stages you've gone through, the different products and books that you've created. And if you had to sum it up, you know, what's, what's that secret sauce that makes your programs different from all the other business and personal growth programs out there? Well, I think one thing, Sean, is that I'm the nerdiest nerd in the industry. You know, I, I, went, I spent over a quarter million dollars on all those gurus only to find out they can't teach their way out of a paper bag. They truly suck at teaching. What they are, they're great self-promoters, right? And they're great at getting attention, right? And so, but that does not mean they're good teachers. That doesn't mean they're good coaches. It means they're great at getting attention. Those are two very different skill sets. So I bought all that stuff. I mean, literally, I bought it and I bought it. I paid all that money and I said, holy cow, these guys don't really teach anything. They don't say anything. There's no there there. And so being the nerdiest nerd, I, I hated that. I was like, what is the answer here? You know, because I was uh, suffering from, or, you know, I was sabotaging myself for many, many years. Remember I shared earlier that I, you know, was suicidal at 25. So that's a classic uh, definition, example of self-sabotage, right? I was, I was holding myself back from success and I didn't see a way out. So when people come to me, you know, in that sort of uh, having that, belief or saying, I don't see a way out. Believe me, I've been there. So the point is having been there, having grown up in poverty and not being a natural, that is in fact what makes this program different. It came from the nerdiest nerd, somebody who did not have things handed to them, who is not a natural and who is not unconsciously competent. I had to become consciously competent going from unconscious incompetence to conscious incompetence, meaning I know I don't know. And how the heck do you fix this thing? How do you let yourself succeed? Well, no one talked about it. I, I had to literally write the books on the subjects, and I've written 15 of them on this very subject of how to give yourself permission to succeed. So I think when you look at that, and not that they're teaching anything wrong or bad, it's just that they left out all the good stuff, all the stuff that actually makes it. That's one of the reasons that people, when they hire me as a coach, when they hire me as a mentor, or when they come to my live events, they very often say, hey, Noah, you know, I spent tens of thousands of dollars on all those guys, and I really, I was still stuck before I came to you. So, you know, that's what's really awesome is I'd rather brag about the car that I helped you get that's in your garage rather than the cars that are in my garage. That's the other thing that you have to look out for in this industry. The gurus very often are showing, hey, look at all my cool stuff. Look at all my shiny objects. Aren't I awesome? And you're like, well, yeah, you're awesome. But have you helped anyone else? You know, and usually it's like, well, not really, right? Because they, they have what's called a personality as opposed to a system, right? If you don't have a systematic approach, if you don't have a system that anybody can do, well, then it's just about you. And see, that's what I'm not like. I'm the opposite of that. I'm like, okay, here's a system that anybody do. That's why, you know, at our live events, we have kids come, you know, we have teenagers come and they come to my live event and then they go out and start their own business along with the parents and the grandparents. So 
it's really exciting to see people from all walks of life finally being able to give themselves permission to succeed so that they can have the success they always dreamed of. Well, Noah, we've barely been able to scratch the surface of all of your phenomenal material. The Power Habits book, it's thick, it goes deep, it's got pictures, which I think is important. Uh, So I know a lot of the listeners, the viewers, we're going to want to find out more. So where can we go to connect with you to find out more about your coaching and training opportunities? And then where can we go also to find out more about the book, Power Habits? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, the book is called Power Habits, The New Science for Making Success Automatic and Very Easy, powerhabitsbook.com. Very easy to remember, powerhabitsbook.com. And you can actually order the book there. And when you order the book, uh, because you're watching this program right now, you can actually get up to $299 of free gifts. I send you a digital gift pack worth over $299 when you order at powerhabitsbook.com. Dot com. And by the way, you can also order this in bulk and I will do a Zoom training for your team. For those of you who are in network marketing or you know, if you have a, a team, for, whether they're virtual or in person. Uh, so we do a lot of trainings you know, all over the country and now all around the globe. So powerhabitsbook.com. And by the way, if you want to learn more about me and my programs, just go to our website, noahstjohn.com. That's my name, N-O-A-H-S-T-J-O-H-N, just like it sounds, noahstjohn.com. Well, like we do with every episode, we'll have detailed links in the show notes, places where you can connect with Noah and pick up your own copy of the book. It's time to bring this episode of the Sean Tabbitt Show to a close. Many thanks for being a part of my conversation with Noah St. John. Once again, our book today was Power Habits, The New Science for Making Success Automatic. Again, to connect with Noah and find out more about his live events and other programs, head on over to his website at noahstjohn.com. And as Noah said, if you'd like to get $299 in free gifts when you order your own copy of Noah's excellent book, Power Habits, head on over to powerhabitsbook.com. And Noah, I just want to say thanks so much for sharing with us today. You've brought your A game and given us so much value today. It's an honor. Thank you, sir. My pleasure.